Hi everyone, welcome to another video on the channel. Thank you very much for joining me. My name is Warren Bennett. We've got Trev mooching around, currently eating some trees over there. Um, yeah, so you, as you probably saw on a video I did a few weeks ago about some exercises that you can do at home, this video is all about exercises that you can actually do in your garden at home. Now, as you can see, I've got a mat and a net. I don't know if you can see a net set up. You actually don't need all that, but you know, if you've got a club and you've got a bit of space at home to do this, you can do these exercises actually without a ball as well or some air balls or whatever. But I'm gonna show you actually today with a mat, some golf balls, and I've got the flight scope up and running. So let me show you some exercises that I think can really help you. So these exercises, there's a couple you wouldn't have seen before. There's maybe one or two that you would have seen me do inside in the academy. Um, these are gonna be all just like kind of a variant on different things and different ways to improve different parts of your body. So let's get on to the first one. So the first one's gonna be feet together. So club width apart. This is great for balance and great to allow your arm swing to do the movement for you. So remember those, those guys that are over the top, you need a little bit more arm swing to allow the club to drop into the ball. So remember what, what um, having your feet together does, having a narrow base, stops you moving around too much. So instinctively, you're gonna to have to stay nice and still. So the secret to hit feet together exercise is nice long arm swing either side of the ball. What you don't wanna do, you don't wanna cheat and just go short, because that's obviously um, contradicting what we're trying to do here. We're trying to get the club and arm swinging independently to the body and let the body come around for the ride. I'm getting pulled along, as you can see there. There's no excess movement here, but it forces you, because of the small stance and the narrow stance, it forces you to be nice and still. And you can see there, I can generate quite a lot of speed and power just by an arm swing. I've got a seven iron here. You can see there the carry distance is 114, club head speed, 68.5 miles an hour. So I can obviously ramp that up. That's just a nice kind of gentle opener so I can go quite hard with that. So you can see, because my arm swings quite efficient, I can generate quite a lot of speed just with using my arms. Obviously it's more beneficial to use body as well and legs. But you can see they're 141 yards with 80 miles an hour club head speed. So feet together is a great, great exercise for you over the toppers because what it does, it neglects you using your arm, uh, your body too much allows the arms to swing a bit more efficiently and you over the toppers allows the arms and hands to drop and club obviously so it allows this down swing to be down instead of the down swing to be over it's a real real brilliant one to keep nice and still if you've got excess movement with your body and arms um, with your body and head so you've got too much lateral motion and not enough speed you guys and girls that want to create a little bit more speed and power, this is a good one because you don't have to hit the ball too much with your body to generate natural speed. So feet together is a really good one, either at a range, in a net, or at home, just swinging a club. Right, on to the next one. Size number two that you can do is called the drag through drill. So this is a great one for the, what you may have heard me say on um, previous videos, waiting for it. This is a really good one. So drag through exercise, Let me show you what it is. So make your normal backswing. So what you wanna try and avoid is steep. So a lot of people who are steep, this is a fantastic one. It's actually a good one for everyone, but especially you steepers and over the toppers and slicers. So this one's a drag through. So what you wanna try and do, you wanna try and get the club on the ground before the ball. So about 18 inches to two foot behind the ball. That's where the ball would normally be. What you want to try and achieve is get this club on the ground so you can see I'm really having to stay very, uh, very passive with my top half there. So on the ground, drag through as long as you can. So it's really keeps you low through the shot. So without a ball this time, back swing on the ground, drag through. So you can see I'm putting pressure down onto the club head and it's really making me kind of get my arm, right arm inside but keep it low, look how low, spine angle, and then obviously you're gonna to have to come up in the end. It's probably exaggerated just for effect to show you. So drag, 
down and drag. It really makes you kind of stay down and through the shot here. Really staying down. Look how low I'm staying here. All these people, all of you guys, if you lift up out of it, chicken wing, so you can see from the front view there, if you suffer from the old chicken wing, this is a great one because it allows your arms to stretch with a bit of an extension. And you just take that to a golf shot. So obviously you don't want to try and hit the ground back here, but you're, I would say, feeling like you're staying really down and through the ball. So Lee Trevino actually once said, he tried to hit three golf balls past the golf ball he was hitting. So what he meant by that was that, imagine he's got a golf ball here, he's still trying to hit a golf ball, three golf balls past to where he is, and this is a great one for that. So the old drag through drill, everyone, drop it, makes you be nice and passive with the top half, keep dragging it through in a straight line for as long as you can and up. Keeps you down and through. It's gonna give you the sensation of staying really low through the ball. Really good one. Okay, on to the next one. Right, so this exercise is all about weight transference. Having your weight staying back onto your back leg for too long can be a real kind of shot breaker because anything can come out of it. A thin, a fat, because you're staying back behind it. Lifting up, no sort of compression, no speed. So having weight moving onto your front leg on the way down and through the, through the shot is so important. This exercise is a good one. Two ways to do it. First way, feet together, make a backswing. You won't be able to make a full backswing because your feet are too uh, close together. But by the time you get to kind of seven eighths of the way up, just before you finish your backswing, you're gonna start moving your left leg forward and then you're gonna swing down at the same time. So there's a little timing to this one. So backswing forward. So you're really stretching your weight forward and allowing weight off your right side as well. You can exaggerate it a little bit and really stretch through. So it's really gonna give you that feeling of the more lateral you get, the more this club wants to drop, you see? So your arms will drop and club can drop. And the second way to do it is you can start with your normal stance width on your backswing, you actually move your leg to your back leg and then forward. So it's like a flow to this one. So normal stance, back, through. So don't hit balls with the feet together one, hit balls with the normal stance width. So back swing, left foot in, left foot forward. Takes a bit of time, you can see where my weight went towards the target, beautiful. Right, normal stance width, back swing, left foot forward. It's really pushing me towards the target. It's a bit difficult to hit shots. Don't, don't think you're gonna hit perfect shots, so be very careful with the, with the kind of evolving onto hitting balls. I would probably, if you suffer from a little bit of weight back, I would just leave hitting balls doing it and just practice getting your weight forward. Practice getting that foot planted. So you're planting this front leg and then through. And when you come to hit a shot, you're feeling the same thing, obviously, without moving it back and forth. So you're feeling some pressure from about here into that front leg. Into that front leg to give you that compression. Okay, so that's a really good one. The old step-in exercise, great for pitching as well, and little chip shots. Really good to allow this body, allow your weight to go forward. Even only just a small little move like that for a chip shot. People who chip, who chip poorly, kind of lifting back. It's like getting your weight going forward. Okay, on to the next one. Okay, this one is called lasso. Sounds a bit weird but the way we use our wrists in the golf swing is so important. And this is all about how we use our wrists in the transition. So don't even need a golf ball for this one. I'll probably hit a few at the end. Uh, Trevor, don't, you can stay there if you like. So a lasso is we're looking to keep the club and getting the club steep on the way back. And then we're gonna lasso it. So you can see what's happening here. There's, a, there's like an element of the wrist flattening. So my right palm's moving up. So it's basically my wrist just doing this whilst you're in motion of a golf swing. So back swing, boom. So you can see I'm just doing this little lasso move. Now obviously you can't really feel and do that whilst you're in motion hitting a golf ball on the first tee, but it's a real great one to allow this kind of whipping action because that's what you need. I see so many people do the opposite. So it's retraining our wrist to do the opposite here. You really want this wrist to go kind of this way. 
because the wrist needs this re-rotation, needs this dropping, shallowing, to allow it to swing to the club without any compensations. If this is in the wrong position, you're gonna now have to compensate. So having this little lasso move, so you've got like a Sergio Garcia, Hogan was like that, all the top players now. You see Kepka like this, it's all like Morikawa. They're all wanting this club to kind of really get kind of shallow. But all what's happening is they're trained, they've trained their wrists to kind of go from palm sideways to palm flat. And that's a real power move. It's what's called putting pressure on the shaft. And I'm gonna do a video about this into more detail. You wanna put pressure on the shaft. Going this way is putting zero pressure on the shaft at all. So you're gonna to have to put every effort into trying to get any sort of kind of distance. This way, there's pressure being put on the shaft and then you, the club just gets lassoed back to, the, back to the ball. So if I can get Trev out of the way. That is Dick, good boy. So let me show you. So you can start off slow motion. So it's a steep to shallow move, but just with your wrists only. No, you can't stay there, bud, because I might shank it. Always wants to get in the shot. Right. So it's a little lasso move, nice and soft and nice and slow so I can feel myself. So it's going to feel really wristy. So, so there's not a lot of movement really going on with my body and it's a kind of a zip down there. Right, so it's really kind of, there we go, it's exaggerated. But you can see all I'm kind of doing is allowing my wrist to kind of drop Get where the club goes. The club's just a byproduct of where my wrists are pointing. But it's whilst the club and your arms, it's whilst your arms, as you doing this, everyone, whilst your clubs, are, whilst your hands are dropping down. See my shoulders staying pretty passive, but my elbows kind of getting into my side there. Right, let's try one. Steep to shallow and lasso it. That felt nice one. Right, so someone drilling in the road, so hopefully you can hear this. So, lasso, which is another word for kind of steep to shallow the, the shaft and then the club head will do everything after that. So the, the old lasso move, so imagining there's a wall behind you, on the backswing you're missing the wall and then on the transition you're dropping the club as flat as you can by moving your wrist and re-rotating your wrist, plus allowing your, your elbow to drop into your side as well. Okay, so that's a really, really good one because you do enough of that, do hundreds and thousands of those, when you stand on the first tee, you won't think and I don't want you to think about this at all. That just happens. But remember, putting pressure on the shaft will give you that compression and give you that natural distance. Right, on to the next one. Right, everyone, so fifth and final one. Really, really important how we use our right hand and right arm in the golf swing. When on gave you a little bit of detail a couple of videos ago. Um, if you take your stance, no club needed at the moment. So you want to try and get, you want to get your right hand under your left. So you want to get your right hand target side and you want to put them both together. As you can see from the video front one there. So you're going that way. So what that's actually doing, as you can see from the behind camera, is it's just settling my right elbow well under my left. And then from there you make a backswing. So what this is doing, this is kind of allowing your right side just to fold naturally. Then on the way down, which is the most important bit, it's keeping your elbow in and bent, stopping this right side being dominant. So hands out in a prayer grip, under. So you keep them together. So you've got both kind of um, fronts of your hands touching each other. Backswing, it's really gonna feel this kind of into impact position. You can see from the behind view how much gap there is between my right elbow and my left arm. My left arm's nice and straight, but my right is bent. That's the key, everyone. Too many people are the opposite. They get too right side dominant, and then the left arm has to straight, the left arm has to bend to compensate. So a few of those indoors or outdoors, really great one for delaying your right side. It allows the club to drop into the ball. Really good, look out. My right arm is into my side there, just like these top pros. Right, how can you transfer this over to a golf shot? Stop at the top, put my right hand this side. Oh yeah, then you can do little rehearsal swings like that. Oh, that's really good. 
Right, backswing. Take my left, right hand, put it the other side of my left hand, and keep it there and swing down. Oh my word, that's fantastic. I've just come up with a new exercise, for me anyway. Backswing, swap. So you can see what I've done there, front view. I've gone under my right, and I'm putting my both front of my hands together, and you swing down. Back swing, swing down, wow. And then make my normal grip and do this back, oh, I can really feel like my right arm, my right elbow is really tucking in. And then you can start hitting golf shots from that. Like we've always said, nice and smooth and slow whilst you're in motion. Oh, I could feel that, you know. I don't really suffer from an over the top move, but I can really sense my right elbow here. Let me do that again. I'll put that slow motion this swing for you. Oh, that was lovely, you know. That's a really good one to kind of work on through the winter. Different pace, so 30%. So you can do them without a club, do them with a club. Oh, that's a really good one. I love that exercise. Backswing, twist your arms. Lovely. Backswing, get your hand over, keep it there. It really stops that right arm. It has to, because the left arm's dominant. And from there, you can see the, feel the same sensations. So that's five little exercises that you can do at home. What have I stood here for 15 minutes doing it? Just some consistency and some continuity in your practice. You'll be amazed next time you go to the golf course, because like we've always said, haven't we, Trev? You don't want to go to the golf course and it's a swing by numbers. You want it to be natural. The only way for it to be natural is to do some reps. And then these are making sure that you're kind of really improving different parts of your golf swing. Because remember, you don't want, really want kind of just one area. You want to do kind of different areas of golf swing, weight transference, arm swing, transition, kind of different drills. And obviously there's more than five, but hopefully these five will work and help you. Any comments, just leave, a, leave it in the description below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And from the garden, I'll bid you farewell and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks very much, everyone. Cheerio.